ladies and gentlemen. We're back with game two of a best of three series between Alliance as well as Team Dignitas. Team Dignitas up one game in this best of three series. Of course, we are casting a Wii play. This is the quarterfinal top eight bracket. I am Luminous of Beyond the Summit and joining me alongside is none other the C All Star Winter himself. Can I call you the C All Star? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Maybe you're a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe, maybe I wait till you two win TI3 and call you C All Star. <laughs> you can just call me Winter for now. Okay, Winter for now. Alright, Winter, what do you got for us? Game 1 was very well played by Team Dignitas. I don't think Alliance played poorly. Like, they play okay, but it was just not I think up to it was the decision making, like, most of the part of it. Like, deciding when to fight and when not to fight. Like, I mentioned in the game, I think that. They could have worked better for them if they tried to split push more, but they were more concerned on trying to contest the 5 versus 5 when Dignitas are trying to take their towers, which I think the situation for them, because they lost the mid lane quite quite badly and he, he didn't go well for him at the start, Magnus. So I think for their position in that game, it would have been better if they split push and just try to defend towers whenever they can, not trying to defend it all the time. Yeah, you were talking about the uh, middle statistics. We, we, uh, you decided to ask Bruno in between games, and according to Bruno, uh, in the S4 versus Snake King matchup, S4 is 5-3, to three, so he generally wins that one. And in terms of S4 having Magnus, Magnus you, you say this stat, because this stat's kind of mind-boggling. Uh, it's 32 to 4. <laughs> 30, he wins 32 to 4 when he has Magnus. So, well, Alliance gets Magnus right. one more time, and it's gonna keep her of light. And here's the thing, they pit Templar Assassin as well. How do they lane this? lane this? Do you put TA mid and you put Magnus on the off lane? That's usually how Admiral Bulldog and Alliance lane uh, this. Yeah, I think they've done most of the time Magnus on the off lane by Bulldog and TA by S4 mid lane. Remaining. Here's the thing though, when Bulldog gets, S, uh, when Bulldog gets Magnus on the off lane, that lane generally always loses. I think Magnus is one of the worst off laner possible. In, in the game. Yeah, since the nerf of the skewer where it's not 1200 range at the start, it's a very bad offlane hero. Yeah, and remember in, in the last game we kept talking about the X Factor is a blink RP, blink RP, blink RP. He's not gonna have the, the farm to get the arcane blink, so basically sure you have Magnus, which is a great all-star hero, but you're not really gonna have Magnus because you don't have the blink RP, so I really don't want to see a Magnus offlane, but I'm afraid that it will happen. Yeah, but some teams run TA on the safe lane, Magnus middle, and they just run an aggressive try lane top. I've seen it done before. Teams okay. that do it before. Okay. Well, but it's it's very rare. And here's the thing though, Team Dignitas, it's gonna have Lone Druid being played by Aoi. It, I, I think it's gonna be a 5-man Dota lineup again, since they have a Lone Druid. The perfect setup for a 5-man with the bear, and you push down towers from a safe range, and plus they have a Warlock now. Yep. The Warlock of Hordes give you the insane team fight that is Fatal Bond into Rock, but the utility you gain from, for example, putting I, a heal I on think your mirror. They, they skip the heal, heal overall. They don't even take one point in the heal, right? How, the way they play it, they get Fatal Bonds and upheaval. Do they? Because I, I don't know. I, I, when I see Dignitas play uh, Warlock, they they max heal first. I don't know. Have oh, they maybe, changed? Maybe it maybe it was maybe it was Liquid. I'm not I'm not very sure then. Okay, all right. We'll, we'll see and, and see what build that you go for. Like, it, it doesn't matter what build that he end up going for. Both, like the the heal build or the right. fatal bond build, they're both really good in lane. Uh, just good in different ways. Yeah, and the heal you can keep healing the spirit bear, so it can be a very useful tool for them. Yep, we'll see exactly what they're going to be going for. Uh, we're in the second stage of the ban. Uh, Warlock, if you haven't seen this hero, he is so lousy in team fight. He just drops two spells and suddenly everybody dies. His, his job is to drop the rock. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> and he has to Michael the rock a little bit. And that rock hurts a lot, but yeah, his job is done after he drops that rock, so... It's gonna be a very exciting game. I, I, I personally love seeing Warlock. Uh, and, but I uh, think this game, there'll be a very huge difference in the 5-man... Uh, in defending the 5-man from Alliance, because they have Keeper of the Light on their side. Keeper of the Light is the best hero to delay pushes as long as possible with the Illuminate. And not only that, he really allows whichever the carry hero is. Uh, and not to mention, blinding light is so annoying for the spirit bear. It's very, very five seconds of blind. Ten seconds. Um, it really remain. allows alliance carry heroes to actually. I, I think it doesn't. It doesn't affect the inferno, five right? It only affects remaining. the bear. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, actually, I'm not very sure. Yeah, maybe. May, I cannot imagine a big ass inferno being pushed back by that pink little light. 
but if it does happen this game, well, we'll be learning something. Um, looks like we're gonna see a lot of partners being banned out to the Keeper. Phantom Lines are being banned out. The uh, Alchemist is being banned out. Alchemist is actually yeah. a very interesting counter pick to bear. The minus armor, the, the slow down the push with the acid spray. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I mean, PL is banned generally because when there's keep up the light, PL just becomes so much stronger. I mean, it used to be like the cancer of pro Dota, but lately I haven't seen it actually being picked. And when it's actually picked, it doesn't really work that well. Like it loses games. Yeah, sometimes when a pick gets it's a new pick and people just don't know how to deal with it. But as time progresses, as time passes, all yeah. the teams generally try to Ten develop some remain. some form of way to deal with it and. The hero loses its effectiveness Five as time goes by. So, remaining. I think for PL, it's just that everyone is just so used to dealing with PL, and it becomes the effectiveness of that hero just gradually decreases. Yep, life is gonna get the ban oh, out. Life so. still is. I know, right? Not... He's still in the pool. What? Because <laughs> we see teams first pick it, right? Right up, straight up. Yeah, it's supposed to be first pick. It's either you get it or I get it, or it's in, in the ban pool. Yeah. End of story. Well, it does end up in the ban pool, but it's literally the last ban of the entire draft. Um, I'm surprised that we didn't see like Magnus Lifestealer first straight out alliance. Even if Lifestealer on Lone Jude in and Lone Jude on the same team, that's remaining. so devastating. That's so devastating. Yep. You basically win your try and you win the solo safe lane one versus one matchup. There's well, no way you're gonna lose the, both the lanes. I think I'm as confused as you are about why Lifestealer is not being picked up, but well, they prefer the Rock over the. Poor old girl, poor old life stealer. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, the rock, if you pick up Warlock so early, any any thoughts of like, oh, they could pick up a Diffusal Blade Carrier and suddenly, you know, mm -hmm. there goes your rock. I mean, worst comes to worst, Templar Assassin could even get it if they really want a Diffusal Blade. But it I gives don't... time for your opponents to think about how to deal with that hero. Well, yeah. I think it's, it's your point is to mention that why do you pick up the Warlock so early? You could pick it up at a later point then, so that it's more difficult for the opponent's side to come up with a counter towards Warlock. Well, I'm not too sure whether this is a counter to the Warlock, but I feel like this is more of a counter the, to the bear. Yeah, for the bear. The Enfeeble is very, very good against the Spirit Bear. Enfeeble is decent. Nightmare is okay. Keep in mind that you could still uh, heal through the Nightmare uh, with things like Salve or whatever, uh, Urn or even a Warlock heal because it's HP loss. I'm not sure what it will come into effect in this game, but it's a little Ten bit of a mech thing. Remaining. And, uh... Yeah, the Nightmare is going to be useful at slowing down the Five push from the Lone Jude there. You Definitely. can just sleep it and wait for wait for your Illuminate cooldown if that's what you're waiting for. There's a lot of ways to deal with the Spirit Bear. Yeah, and also gives some very decent trialing, right? The Nightmare into Illuminate combo. We've seen things like Enfeeble, Chakra Magic, Enfeeble Spam. I'm not sure whether that works, but I've seen it many times. So there's uh, definitely uh, ways I, to use I have this. not seen that. It's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely see my fair share of level one Enfeeble, like just minus thirty damage straight up, and harass carries like that. But so they are not gonna skill brain sap. They just get nightman and Enfeeble. No, they actually get brain sap. They they go one one one, and then they go back to brain sap. So I actually tried. If you solo meet the bane, yeah, you just max Enfeeble and. <laughs> You make the enemy so well, they quit the game. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm seeing here? Yeah, Slada. I think the point of Slada here right now is just they want another follow-up. So that after the rock comes down, they have an AoE stun to follow it up. I mean, if you want an AoE stun, there's better hero, right? Do you pick him for the good chasing ability? Do you pick him for the minus armor? Yeah, it feels I definitely like a agree hero. there's a lot of other better follow-up stuns like Sand King. Remaining. There's still... Actually, there's still less shot in the pool, but I think since they go, they're go, they going down this remaining. road, Warlock could potentially be their secondary support other than Rubik, and Slada would be their carry. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen Team Tignitas run the Warlock as a support, so I'm, I'm betting money on that Warlock's gonna be the solo mid. So they're gonna be drafting another uh, support. Another support hero. Yeah, yeah. Lashrock could be a very good pickup here for sure, them. Yeah. To change to change stun and not to mention Edict plus Lone Jude. And Edict each true refraction. There are so many benefits that Edict can give them right now. Helps you push your tower, it works against Templar Assassin, Refraction or Mel Strike, whatever the case might be. What I'm a little bit worried about is Bane Elemental is kinda good against Slaughter. Nightmare and Fever. Yeah, I have to agree totally. Slaughter spins in spins grip. GG. Yeah, there, there's a... Nightmare, 
Five okay, you can't stun anyone. <laughs> exactly. There's there's a reason we don't see Slarner too often. Like the hero's actually just not that good. Juggernaut's gonna be the pickup here. So, is this offensive trialing time and basically give your Magnus or Templar a safe I, lane? I think the main maybe the main thing is Sada's stun has a slow effect later on that synergizes well with the upheaval. And you were talking about the trialing. Is it gonna be an aggressive trialing? I think it is gonna be an aggressive trialing because yep. those three heroes are just so scary. Maybe Slaughter is a little bit more difficult hero to dive against. And Slaughter is very, very weak in the lane at the start if you pressure him in the lane. Oh, it's gonna be a universe Slaughter. Offlane Slaughter? No? Maybe they're running offensive trialing themselves and put out on the safe lane. We'll see. We'll see. So let's quickly mm. introduce the players here. Team Dignitas are up one game in this best of three series. Aoi will be playing the, uh, of course, his lone drip. Fog will be playing Rubik once again. Very, very spectacular Rubik lane game one. Warlock, most likely it's going to be going mid, is he? Um, yes, it's going to be handled by Snakey. Oh, yeah, smoke. They're yeah, smoked up. Are they going Roche? Level one? Everybody gets Level set. one? Can, can, can they actually do it with these five heroes? I'm actually doubting, doubting it. Uh, actually, let's quickly check out items. Uh, do we have a Ring of Basalius? No Ring of Basalius anywhere, I see. Are they scaling Bash? Oh, yeah, the, no. No scaling yeah. Crush? I think they're gonna go for it, yeah. Maybe they can do it, but it's gonna be very long. I think it's gonna take them a long time though, to do this. And, well, Fog is gonna be ward dropping up uh, Observe Ward. Yeah. I, I was gonna talk about the later on, I... when when they wanna do Roche later on, they will have the amp, mm. so it's a lot easier to do it, but I didn't expect them to do it right now. Yeah, and for Alliance, we have Aki on the Keeper of the Light, we have EGM on the Bane Elemental, Lorda on the Juggernaut, S4 on the TA, and last but not least, we have Admiral Bulldog. Off the off link magnet. Yeah, yeah off the magnet. Roshan is halfway oh. dead, and they're not scouting this I at all. I think they're actually gonna do it. Yeah, they're gonna finish it when the creeps arrive out. I don't think they can make it on time before it comes up. I'm surprised he didn't straight up get bash here for. for yeah, and I'm actually surprised that the Jakiro didn't even skill liquid fire. Yeah, for the little, little bit of extra damage. Um, but obviously, if they skill all these level 1 Roche spells, they're going to be very, very and weak. Sada didn't wrong. even stun Roche even once. <laughs> hey, straight up straight up right click damage. They're going to get it. Everybody hits level 2. If uh, oh if way too sexy don't die, there you go. Warlock picks up the Aegis. Everybody hits level 2. A ton of gold for an entire Dire team. Yeah, big win here. <laughs> 007. Indeed. First time. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. I, I thought you were making an old 7 reference, which completely, completely uh, <laughs> correct as well. So, generally, when you see a level 1 Roshan completely unstopped, it is a huge, huge advantage, huge, right? Like, yeah. the yeah, trialing are, wins automatically. It's not, yeah, the, tri the heroes they have to do it, it's not very obvious. It's actually quite... You, you won't expect it. Top tower. Yeah, and maybe that's why nobody you checked. The the lines just got blindsided <laughs> completely. And now level yeah. three on Warlock. And there's also one more thing I like about this pickup, the Warlock pickup as well, I, which I just noticed. He's gonna use Shadow Word to destroy the shield <laughs> remake, destroy the reflection. Yeah, right on top. Just <laughs> drop it on top, and we're getting DDoS. Hopefully oh no, that's, that's not bad. the case. They just got Roshan. Oh no. I hope to God that nothing really, really happens. Um, the offlane is gonna be Lone Druid, although he doesn't care about going yeah, to offlane anymore. The, the only downside of that was he lost his bear to the Roshan and he Two bears, right? No, the... he only lost- there's only one bear, he only had one bear just now. Where, where is the his bear right now? Even... He lost his bear to the Rosh. Oh, oh, and he couldn't summon it again because he just summoned it in base, yeah, yeah. So, um, he's gonna tank a little bit of damage here, but it's not gonna be a big deal. Well, the way they're gonna run this is gonna just ditch the offlane, launch it on the jungle, just defensive trialing. Bulldog is the because of a byproduct of the uh, Roshan. Yeah, he's gonna get level two here, which is actually pretty important. You get skewer and shockwave. Um, yeah, but it's just a very good trade off for the Roshan. Everyone's level two, like you mentioned. Yeah, and and the two hundred gold, quick career upgrades, quick wards, quick boots, whatever you want to buy, they're gonna be really rich. And uh, I think that's mostly important for Aoi, who's having, you know, he lost a bear, like you said, and it's going to have a little bit tougher time in the jungle. Yeah, there's nothing really yeah. too, too much to talk about here. And they're going to deter a lot of gangs to come mid, because Snake King has the Aegis. They're just, just going to be discouraged to try the ganking. 
Man, he has AJs, forget it. Do you wait basically 6 minutes and then just gank at 6007? Or 607? <laughs> Sometimes, actually I think some teams when they do level 1 Roshan, they give the AGs to the offlane player so that he can play play around in the offlane with the AGs. It's yeah. much more useful, I feel, if you give it to the offlaner. Because if you give it to the mid laner, it's just going to be like, okay, they're not going to gank him because he has AGs. But if you give it to the offlane, he can use the AGs to exchange in for some XP or some gold. To put himself in a vulnerable position where he can get XP, but use the AGs in exchange for it. So I want to ask you a silly question. Like, this is... We don't see level 1 Roshan at all, but what about an idea of doing a level run like that, uh, like Team Dignitas just did, and mm -hmm. when it's undetected, everybody else walks out of the pit. You leave just one hero oh, in the pit, yeah, okay. and you hit I him know. level 6. I've, like... done I've done this before, you know, what hero we gave on level 6? We, uh, we gave Tinker. Tinker, Tinker came, up, came out to the lane, level 5, and he was up against the Storm Spirit. He just ran up Laser Rocket, and the Storm Spirit is like 100 health. Exactly. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine a level six warlock right now on the mid lane, or maybe? I think we talk. I talked about this with my friends before. What hero is the most scariest if you do that? We we came up with ancient apparition, so you have a level six ultimate, Global so ultimate. Far. and I... we came up with nature's prophet as well. Sure. Nature. What about Zeus? And that's also Zeus. Yeah. Yeah, it's like pretty sick. Pretty sick. Uh, I think I've seen it once in my life. This is like three, four years ago, where they did have a level five, level six tinker. Uh, they end up losing the game. I, I don't even know how that happened, but that was a long, long time ago. But hopefully it looks like we are good to go, maybe, on Team Dignitas' side. Maybe not. Nice okay. you on Skype at me. And in case for anybody that's joining us, Dignitas is up one game in this best of three series. And uh, so far, so good. For Team Dignitas, they got themselves a huge gold and experience lead. Uh, but the big deal is that we have a little bit of technical issues. Yeah, going back to the Roshan, I'm actually quite surprised they didn't have a Bessie at the start. You were looking for the Bessilus, like usually if you go for level 1 Rosh, you have a Bessie. So that yeah. you can take up more damage, but they didn't even need it to do it. But it took them a very long time to do the Roshan. To be yeah, honest, it's, it's plus six damage, which is not uh, irrelevant, but more importantly, the plus two armor aura for your whole team, uh, very very yeah. helpful. So, yeah, one of the two important things is they had the bear to tank, and Sada started with the stout shoe, so they could soak up a lot of damage. Yep, of course, being on the dire side helped. I, like you said, there's no liquid fire being scaled up. There's no crush being yeah, used. Yeah, it was very, it was very weird. Okay, the Sala, he scaled his crush. He went to the Rosh. He didn't use his crush once. Yeah. And the Jakiro went into the Roshan without scaling anything, and they just right the Roshan until it, the creeps come up. I'm reading the chat as well. Um, somebody is suggesting level six lion. That's pretty sick as well. Uh, checking the ping real fast, it I, seems like... I think giving the Tinker the level 6 is also a good thing. When he has early boost of travel, let's say like 6 minutes he has boost of travel. Yep. That's so scary as well. Speaking of Tinker, uh, obviously Tinker is definitely a uh, very big hero in uh, C Dota. Any thoughts yeah, on I... European Dota? I've never actually seen him really being picked up. They mostly I use him as a utility they... defender. Does only Navi pick Tinker? I, I think I've only seen Navi pick up Tinker. I, I don't think I've seen any other team from the European team pick up Tinker. I think rarely Team Liquid picks it for Boba, and they use him as like oh, a yeah, defender yeah. against a big push strat. But aside from that, it's just like a forgotten hero almost. And he's once he gets going, he's one of the scariest late game hero. I hate that hero when I'm a support on the enemy team. He <laughs> just throws rockets at you and oh shit, I have to send a south. Oh shit, I have to go home. And once you get a blink dagger, then you know you're never gonna gank him. So, unless you have a storm, no one escapes the storm. Yeah. All right, I think we're good. Long, long pause. Good thing though, it's just a you know five minute wait. Think about all, all these level six or level one stuff. All right, we're back. Good to go. Yeah, back. To, it's gonna be back to laning phase. Both sides are gonna be very passive, taking the safe lane. They're gonna choose to get more levels on their bane oh, instead of going yeah. more aggressive early on. Yep, you talked about how yeah, we were expecting an aggressive try lane right from the start. 
So yeah, I, I, I was, like because generally Slardar, a decent aggressive trialing hero, the fact that he could dive, I, he's very I tanky. I think they changed their mind probably, because after looking, they got the Roshan, so, oh, okay, they're not gonna do this. Yeah, if they play even right now, they're playing with that level advantage, and it's gonna be Fatal Bond and Heal on the mid lane, and uh, mm. as far as uh, taking a ton of damage, he's level 2. That's actually, that's actually, when you think about it, it's very, very good harassment to the TA. Yeah, drop the nice shield, bro. Reaction. Basically, you have no refraction at all. Well, I mean, the, the good thing about refraction, you can still use it offensively. But it, it really is taxing on your mana and stuff. There you go, another refraction being uh, not, used. Not to, not to mention, Warlock is 600 range. Every time TA wants to last hit anything, he's gonna get 2 or 3 hits from the Warlock. Wait, actually, I take it back. Um, Warlock, Fatal Bond, it's... Well, well, I'll talk about that later. Ammo Bulldog in the top lane. Dual Breath, Ice Path, a ton... Ooh, nice gear back here! I don't think that will be enough here. Ammo Bulldog will be dropping First Blood, and that goes on Universe. Oh my goodness, this is not going good. But Fatal Bond is, I think this HP loss, right? And that shouldn't break the shield. So it's actually just straight up like oh, Warlock okay. heal on top. So does, does it work that way? I, I thought it's going to just regardless still take away the... Like if you drop a urn on TA shield, it doesn't break it, right? Like I think it should be the same thing. But in any okay. case, on the bot lane... I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> in any case, on the bot lane here, you see Loda spinning away after Illuminate. They're working on this tier 1 tower. Tier 1 tower is going to go down, so... Uh, Amber Bulldog's coming back in. Does he have the bear? He does. He resummoned it, but he's got to be very you careful. Mean AUI 2000. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. AUI 2000. I keep calling bear Ammo Bulldog because they're like the same thing to me. Um, tier 1 goes down, but he's going to get some decent HP using the bear to pull it back. He's got to be somewhat careful because Nightmare goes on him, he's dead. Uh, but he's staying very, very far away, so he's fine. Yeah, that's the reason why I feel if you give the Aegis to the offlaner, he can just be that more aggressive when he's farming or taking XP. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Ammo Bulldog on the top lane, being a little bit aggressive himself. Oh, Aegis is already popped. Wait, did he die? Mm -mm. Yeah, he. I think he personally suicided because he had. Low, he was in mana. a very bad. Yeah, he has no mana and HP wasn't really a lot. As for uh, getting the hell out of harass out of him, all his shield breaking breakdown by the heal, as well as uh, Fatal Bond on top and. He's having a very, very tough time. I'm surprised but, that Warlock but the last hit count. Yeah, but the last hit counter doesn't show otherwise. Both of them are even on the last hits. Well, that's uh, the power of TA with that refraction. Looks like we're going to see a wraparound gank on Admiral Bulldog. Yeah, he does have that level 1 skewer. I'm not sure if you. He don't think he'll survive this. Well, he has to actually run north, but he's gonna run into Universe Dota. Nice tango, nice tango. He's gonna skewer away. He does not. He's gonna get chased on Ice Path into a lift. There's another kill. Jakiro picks up this one. Is this time to push? I think so. Yeah, they have a siege. But they don't have Bassi. Yeah, nor do they have uh, Liquid Fire. Maybe they'll pick it up a level 4 if they get one more creep kill. Radiant. But I think they at that point here... Snaking, snaking got ganked. Because he used his Aegis already. <laughs> so the support comes in and says, Alright man, don't need to gank at 607. They're ganked right now. They do get a pick off. Thanks to a couple of... Uh, Nice initiates here from uh, Ishim as well as Aki. So, I don't think that's really a big kill on Warlock because he, he almost has level 6 and AUI critically got some free last hits and experience on the mid lane. So, it worked out fine. Yeah, he, he needs it badly as well. He yeah. was getting basically so little before. Yeah, but he's level 5 now. Thanks that the level 1 Roshan yeah, really helped. Thanks to the Roshan. Yeah, yeah, thanks to the Roshan. Man, if they didn't get that level 1 Roshan, I think this game would have been a lot more yeah. difficult. When, when you look at the heroes, it's very like weird, but they actually had a plan for it. If it wasn't because of the level 1 Roshan, their heroes would be in a lot of trouble. Because Warlock would be having quite a tough time against TA, I feel. Checking out on GPM right now, Loda is leading the entire game. Although that's nothing too much to talk about. Uh, he does have face boot, he's going to be looking for the standard face uh, drums build. Uh, and actually the Radiant heroes are actually farming quite alright as far as leading in terms of farm on the mid lane. And that's considering the entire 1000 gold lead uh, from uh, Dig and Toss. So I think maybe it's actually Alliance ahead. Yeah, I think Alliance is actually doing quite alright. Looks like we have Twin Head Dragon teeping on the mid lane. He's going to drop the rock. He's thinking about yeah, that. He's think... out of mana. Oh no. He, yeah, he was out of mana. He barely had enough. What I really like is that immediately once... Uh, once uh, Warlock turned level 6, they're coming down the mid lane for a gank. Unfortunately, out of mana at that point. The Sensual gets dropped on the mid lane as well, so they could make sure that TA doesn't have traps mid. And that's probably one of the best ways to protect your solo mid. Make sure that enemy TA don't have this entire line warded with trap, so your, your solo mid just don't yeah. die free. 
Yeah, that's that's a very very good thing that they have the sentry, so that the warlock feels a lot more safer. Even if his teammates come to gang, there's no traps to slow him first for his teammates to follow up. Ooh, S4 might be in trouble I think now. They are, yeah, they're gonna try and gang S4. Ooh, S4 drops they a shield. Need... Come on, let's go! They There's the rock, buddies. No, Twin and Dragons can go back up on top lane here. He's just going back and forth, back and forth. I think they really want to kill an Ammo Bulldog. Yeah. Aki's here yeah, as, well. as well. Here goes, the Spring comes in. Universe, he wants to get that gank off. Way too sexy is here as well, but the initiation range is not there. Here's the issue with this lineup. They're okay in terms of getting killed, but not too good in terms of getting pushed. Oh, oh no. way too sexy gets caught out to the tower. Multiple TP comes in. Yeah, he's dead for sure. Ammo Bulldog gets that kill, and are they going to chase for a little bit more? Trap's going to be on two, and here we go. Omni GG Slash. He's going to try to use it. He's trying to, he's trying to. Fog is so dead right now, he doesn't even know. I think they're going to save it. They don't even need to use that Omni Slash. One, come on, Fog, Fog. Some sick shoes, no. He finally goes down, he finally goes down. And here's the thing though, Dignitas is getting nothing in return. It's not like they're pressuring tier one bot. They're not yeah. really doing too much melee. because what are you gonna do as a Warlock? Right click? Because they need, they need the Lone Druid to be more farm and has more levels before they can group up and push. And that over extension there will delay the incoming push. Mid lane S4 lot. drops the rock on top. There's a... Oh, there's gonna be a crush, and of course, with the minus armor being provided by Universe, yeah. they get a free kill. And I think with that, they're gonna get a free tier one tower. Off of the top lane here, Fog TP's right back in, and uh oh, oh, Omni Slash. Fog, Fog says no, guys. No, the police don't do this. No, he's just gonna die. He's, he, yeah, he's gonna die. The sad thing is, he survived, or he TP back into the lane, and immediately he dies. So he's gonna TP scroll wasted. All sad. Like, does he even see that Luminate coming in? He should see that Luminate coming in, right? Like, this is as dead as you could actually be for Fog. I think what he's gonna do now is his Telekinesis key is on Loda. <laughs> yep. Telekinesis key, and I think the best thing he can even do is perhaps kill up a smoke and buy it immediately so you don't lose any gold. <laughs> or maybe even try to get a last hit or two under the tower with your Fable or do something crazy. Like, he's he is as dead as possible. Like, there's no way. Yeah, but you're still trying to come up with some ways that he can make use of the 100 gold. He yeah, has, if right? you buy a smoke, hey, you only lose 12 <laughs> gold and that TP scroll, but hey, you know. What, what yeah, can you, you last hit. Maybe he can take a last hit under the tower right now and get a TP. <laughs> Alright, looks like Lone Druid has disconnected. I, I hope it's not DDoS, but... Uh, so, like, after that Roshan, level 1 Roshan, Dignitas really, really far ahead. But as this game went on, like, like you talked about, the hero matchup is not really favorable to Team Dignitas. And that really allow Alliance to come right back. The goal is somewhat even. Sure, there's like a 1,000 goal lead. But I don't think that's a big lead at all, considering that they got Roshan. Um, and the EXP it, lead... It's also because they are ahead by one tower. Alliance are ahead by one tower. They might be ahead by two if they pick out Fog. The tower is pretty low. There is Glyph available, but the, here's the thing. There's no Rock. Um, here's, a, here's also the big issue with Slaughter. He needs a ton of items to actually be effective. He wants an early game Vanguard. He wants an early game Blink to be stiff. <laughs> Very farmed. He only has 28 last hits yep. on the ship against a mag. So I'm, I, I'm still somewhat confused about slaughter this pickup. I guess it's okay against Templar Assassin. It's decent against Juggernaut. It's it's just <laughs> confusing. Hmm. But I think they're gonna be relying on the next Roshan as well. It's gonna be very important for them to take the next Roshan to control the game. Yep, they do have amp damage, so you break it with uh, Fable or something like that, and then you amp it, and it's easy, actually. Uh, I, I don't imagine that Alliance yeah, can take a team in the pit. The amp damage will help the Spirit Bear a lot. Yep. Speaking of Spirit Bear, a Spirit Bear player is uh, continuing to experience a little he, bit of... Uh, he has the highest last hits in the game. It doesn't feel like it, right? Like. Yeah. He, well, keep in mind that a lot of these last hits are like level 1 creep kills, uh, creep camps. Yeah, the neutrals. Yeah, so it doesn't actually mean anything because they get some. But, but still, he, he's actually doing quite well. He has 2k gold, he has boots, he has stop shoe protection on his bear, quelling bait. That's actually a lot of gold. He has about 3k gold net worth, I think. Does he have something on the I mean, look at the net worth though. He's, <laughs> he's actually really poor on the net worth. So. Uh, he's actually 2k only on net worth. Yeah. And Loda is a really the rich one. Oh, why Loda... does he have 2k only? He has 2k gold right now. He has boots. He has a salve on his hero. He has a quelling bait, ring of protection, and stout shield on his bear. 
I think it doesn't count the yeah right. I think it doesn't count the the, the items on his bear. That's why his that was so low. It's, it's not supposed to be so low. It's not actually counting any of his items at all. Like he has nineteen seventy in gold. That's that's his yeah. Worth. That's not how it's supposed to be counted, right? I think it's supposed to count the items on your hero as well. Yeah, and and bear. Yeah. So riot, please fix this because. So I he see... actually has three k net worth right now. If you look at the graph. 3k will put him at second place. Yep. Okay, so he's doing a lot better, I imagine. Yeah, I was, I was actually quite surprised when I look at the net worth. Wait, there's something wrong. <laughs> Speaking of net worth, uh, Admiral Bulldog doesn't have too much. But he still has his arcane, so he's doing, you know, okay. He got his arcanes faster than S for the last game. That's actually kind of sad. <laughs> That's actually kind of sad. What a call by Winter. <laughs> Or play Mac gets Arcane's faster than Solar Mid Mac. Yeah, he got that one kill though, as uh, 3 or 4 TP came in. Yeah, they all extended where you were talking about the Jakiro, he was indecisive whether he should go to the top lane to gank or he should go gank middle. And in the end, he decided to go on top and they died. They tried to dive on the Magnus, but the Keeper mm -hmm. of the Light and Magnus spent the creep wave out and the situation ended up being. They were the ones without the diving without creeps and TPS came down. Yep. Screwed. Well, for anybody that's joining us, this is game two of Alliance versus Dignitas. Dignitas up one game. If you want to catch us in your own uh, Dota TV, we play tickets are three ninety nine. Also, I think still going on sale is the TI three international tickets. If you have uh, planning to go to Seattle, well, you need a ticket. Those tickets are hard to get though. Apparently, uh, nobody could buy them. <laughs> maybe maybe only us we can buy it. other other people can buy it. Yeah. I I think they're keep uh keep releasing those tickets as time progresses, but every time they go on sale, like it's just instantly gone. That website is so hard to use. I think that website is true. Yeah, but back to the game. What what do you think is gonna happen like in the next two to three minutes? If you are Alliance, do you think it's better for them to go aggressive before the next Roshan comes out? Because you know you gotta know Dignitas just gonna wait for the next Roshan. I, I think if you're Alliance first, you get Fog killed. That's gonna basically for sure. <laughs> you take down that tier 1 up top. There is Glyph, um, but since Dignitas have no rock, it's basically a free one. Because the most dangerous heroes right now is Warlock when he has rock. Slaughter if he has blink, which he doesn't have it right now. So basically Dignitas is not really so ready to fight yet. Do, do you think it's more important for him to get his blink dagger up? But you were talking about him, it's important for him to have a vanguard as well. Yeah, that's why I don't like the hero. Sometimes you just want both and you just don't have farm to get both. You want blink because but if it, you... It's Dignitas, you talk about Dignitas being the greediest team. Yeah, well, right now they're greedy. They want all the items, they just don't have the room. Because if you're trying to sprint in and you run in, you get really owned by that uh, Bane Elemental. So you could blink in, but suddenly, uh, you know... Mana, Mana League is very good against Slaughter. Sure, yeah. There's there's a ton of answers against Slaughter, so I don't know what he gets. But going back to answer your first question, Alliance, because... I, I think you, you make the point that he has to get a BKB as well. But there's Finn's Grip and RP. And drums. And he needs a drum suit, right? Like, he, he needs to be six slotted. At end of the day, Slaughter is just not that good of a hero. So. I, I think B BKB is not not good as well because there's TA doesn't really help against TA the BKB. But the only thing it helps you is the shockwave spam brain sap. Blinding light, mana, mana yeah, mana light as well. So so it's kind of in a bad spot for the Slaughter what to to get the BKB or not to get the BKB. Maybe maybe the best item is just a straight up drums. Just give you like stats and, and charge. Just go for yeah stats drums vanguards. Possibly even an armlet. Sure, yeah. Um, but to answer your question, Alliance, I think they take down the tier 1 tower top and take down tier 1 tower mid, and then that should be enough advantage for them to decide to take any Roche fights. They need to control the next Roshan because if Dignitas gets the next Roshan, they're going to give the Aegis to the Sala, and Sala can just spin and get an engage off yep. without worrying too much. Well, uh, what a, what Dignitas need to do firstly is they get... need a they need a mech as well for sure Dignitas. Who's gonna get the mech? That's the question. Warlock generally doesn't get the mech. Do they actually get the Midas on the Warlock? Um, I don't think I've seen them. Seems like he's going Necro book. He has a lot of giant strength. I think he's going Treads straight into Acceptor. Hmm. Because Acceptor Warlock is like kind of. I don't right? really like that decision though. I. 
think I prefer to have a Mac and a MacBook to help the push. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see exactly what they come. I'm a MacBook fan. I think it's a very underused item. Necrobook is actually quite decent, especially against uh... It's good stats, a lot of HP Yep The movement speed, uh, attack speed underrated, good against Templar Assassin Yeah, imagine you are Dignitas, you have 3 Necrobooks, you run the Necrobooks into the Illuminate, what will happen? <laughs> have you seen that game where there was 5 Necrobooks being built? Uh, we, we did it before for my team last time for Yeah, each. yeah, how that worked out? Uh, one of the Pinoy teams Big Omni Knight plus Obsidian Destroyer. Uh -huh. We pair the Obsidian Destroyer and he comes in and uses orb and kills all our <laughs> books in two hits. Actually, Necrobooks are very dangerous item pickup against a. Uh... Or, or they will go for just Midas on all the supports. Midas or Helm. They could steal your Necrobook and be like, YOLO, what are you gonna do? And suddenly your 2.7k item gets You're the one who being Necrobooked yeah. after the Helm was dominated. So. Especially with a new helm that with a 60 second cooldown, you'll have always exactly. have it ready. So definitely, but the only problem is how do you get your supports the helm of dominated? Good question. Getting there is the problem. <laughs> I mean, Juggernaut could get it right, definitely. Magnus, maybe he could get it too. So, well, I, I guess it's not difficult for the keeper of the light to get a uh, helm of dominator. Can you imagine ever seeing a, a keeper getting a helm? It's like the most troll bill ever. Like. Maybe he has to just go for backing by the enemy. I've seen five blade mills for Keeper of the Light Illuminate. Oh yeah, I think Sexy Bamboo was on the receiving end of that one in a regular pub game. Oh, that anyway. that one was a I think was a thinker, was it? Oh maybe. Yeah, no, like I think it was a pub game. Sexy Bamboo was uh on the losing end. He charged Illuminate, and entire the entire enemy team blade mail and stood oh, in front it, of Illuminate. It was it was Dignitas as well. I think it was on AUI's AUI two thousand stream. Yeah 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 definitely, and then. Bamboo basically waited five seconds and died. That's that's how that how that engagement ended up. I think it's much more worse for a thinker because you can't control your march if the enemy team does it. In but I think the good way to counteract it is to get a U scepter on the thinker when whenever it happens just U yourself up in the air. Or you could be uh get a BKB, right? That that's another answer too. I think if it's three years ago getting a BKB was good, then you can refresh your BKB. Yeah. That was pretty broken to have like a full magically immune PKP Tinker running around the whole fight. It's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, at that point, there was no reason not to get BKB on Tinker as the first item after your Soul Traveler. Well, you are watching currently the DDoS of a Ancients as there is nothing going on. Why, why does it happen to him all the time? I well, think it's, it's now happening to Loda. <laughs> well, last they're, time God and I read Harry resume, Potter. They're gonna resume the game, and Bot will run to the trees, and Loda will be running back to tower. <laughs> Straight up, so you know that would be a good move, man. We're thinking about what you could do. Uh, there you go, man. Four versus four, fair. Yeah, last time when we had a DDoS, uh, God and I read Harry Potter. I, I have my I have my Kindle ready. Like I, I could straight up read Harry Potter now if we if we really want it, but I'll if, load this back. If it's LD he'll be telling stories to Elgato. Yeah, Elgato's no longer here, that's a sad thing. Elgato. Oh really? He didn't he didn't bring Elgato over? Elgato was his roommate's cat. It wasn't even his cat. I so, thought it was his cat. No, it was his roommate's cat. So now he moved. Like, the only closest thing to Elgato right now is Purge, so I don't know. He could tell story <laughs> to Purge. Why? What does Purge do there? Elgato has this, like, like brown blonde hair, right? So, uh -huh. Purge has, has this Goldi Goldilocks, so... Are, are you oh, following me there? No? He's not gonna be too happy if he knows that. No, I think, I think, I think Purge will be happy. Like, Elgato, he has a 5 hour work week. Same thing with Purge, 5 hour work week. Like, Purge and Elgato, lazy as fuck. Shots fired by Luminous here. It'll get back to Purge, no problem. <laughs> <sighs> For anybody who's just wondering, uh, LD and Gods is taking a good break. Uh, as they're, well, it's not even a break, because they're doing, they're making sure that the production of the studio is ready to go. 
and uh, since TI2, uh, TI3 West Qualifier and East Qualifier is coming up very soon, so they're making sure the studio is ready to go. And that's where I'm casting. You moved all the new PCs up in the room already? Is everything set up? Um, it's a mess right now. I think I went last Sunday and nothing really is perfectly set up. The big, the big casting PC, the production PC, it's all built. They just need to plug in, plug it in into each other, get all the microphones and cameras and all that stuff ready. But, uh... So everything will be ready on time for the qualifiers? I hope so. I hope so. Because every every day people send uh, those hate mails to LD and be like, "Yo, I donated fifty bucks. Where my studio at?" <laughs> Which is a fair point. You know, we're we're trying to set it up. We're trying to make it work. You need more manpower. That's what I told. I, that's what I told Gods. I'm like, dude, you need to hire people. You gotta have people that you know make you food in between casts. That's what I suggested. So far, I make my own food in between casts. This is so sad. All we do is like eat lasagna and go to Denny's at night. I'm sick of Denny's by now. You know in the Chinese team's game house, they actually have people to cook them their dinner. Yeah, see? That's yeah. legit, right? Maybe you should get something like that. Oh, shoot. I don't control the money, man. I haven't even got paid yet. These guys are like, oh yeah, you could come cast. And then, uh, and then I know they have like new cars being bought. You seen that photo of Gods in, in front of that sick yellow sports car? <laughs> I haven't seen, seen a cent of my paycheck, guys. They're working me to the bones. Yeah, he was having a lot of fun with his Lambo. Oh dear. Alright. This, this is gonna be the longest pause ever. I'm getting my kin though. One sec, I need to find it. Take over the stream, Winter. No, don't leave me. Just kidding, my my sister took my Kindle. No no Harry Potter, unfortunately. Oh, apparently AUI two thousand went to his friend's house to play. Oh, straight up, he just left and went to his friend. I hope his friend's nearby. Yeah, according to Fog, it's only a few minutes. Okay, well, I think we've been waiting for. Less than a few minutes. Uh, there's a couple of people on on the chat asking you to tell them a story, Winter. Any good story to tell? Okay, I uh, I think of this. I always remember this when people ask me to tell them a, a Dota story. Right, here we go. <laughs> uh, it's about Ice as Ice. ice. Uh, it was the first time I see him play at a LAN event. Uh, I can't remember what LAN event was it. I went to Singapore and he was playing this. I don't know what the LAN event was, he was with uh, Tofu Boy and his Singaporean teammates and there was this match they were playing that he was playing Phantom Lancer oh no, he, he was actually playing against Tofu Boy, Tofu Boy was the lion with a gem and his Phantom Lancer was last hitting a tier 2 tower Okay. and he has like 400 HP Tofu Boy has a dagger, has a gem he knows, he sees Tofu Boy coming because his support has a ward there coming to kill him, he was a solo mid lion or something like that he is coming over and his first reaction was he just stood still, his hero and two illusions there. And he ran one illusion 
upwards one illusion to the left and Tofu Boy blink next to it. Blink over, stun one illusion, hex one illusion and he think he had enough HP to survive a, a finger and he turned and killed Tofu and took the gem and took the tier 2 tower. That's a pretty sick play. I'm surprised that yeah. he didn't just like finger the... Uh... Uh, I, 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 I was like at the top of my head, I was like, what the heck just happened? Well, I say is pretty good at Dota. Yeah, if you think about it, if your first reaction was to doppelbock and run away, you did. Be yeah, because he has gem. Yeah. And he was so calm and cool, and he just stood there and he micro the illusions around. And I'm pretty sure I, uh, Topo Bo was so mad. Well, here, here's a little bit story from myself. Uh, this is a TI2 story. So let me tell you guys a little bit about Sexy Bamboo. Uh, currently a player from EG. Last year, went to TI2, played for Mouseport then. Uh, Sexy Bambo never had Taco Bell. Winter, have you had ta ta Taco Bell before? What's a Taco Bell? Taco I... Bell is this like, American fast food chain. It's like McDonald's, Burger King, you know, fast no, food. I only, have, I only have Wendy's at Seattle. Okay, <laughs> Wendy's. Or right, any case, to me, since I live in America, Taco Bell is shit. Like, it, it's just fast food. It doesn't taste good. But apparently Sexy Bambo seen this Taco Bell commercial wherever he lives, and he thinks Taco Bell is like the best food ever. So he went to America and the one thing that he wanted to do is not to win TI2, was to fucking eat Taco Bell. But TI2, the schedule is very, very busy, right? You know, you have time to uh, play your group qualifiers and then you uh, play the playoffs. And then even though when you're not playing playoffs, you're watching TI2, you're not going to Taco Bell. So at the last night of his stay at United States, this was like, 1 a.m. in the morning we actually got on a cab it was nebula it was myself uh, uh sexy bambo and one other person we we're literally telling the taxi cab to drive all over the world all over the city to find a fucking taco bell but they were all close so sexy bambo the next day went on a plane feeling very very sad and never had taco bell so i think this year his biggest motivation to win the West qualifier is is for another chance to get Taco Bell, and if he does make it, he's in Phoenix right now. Am he's in I Phoenix correct? right now. Did he get flown out? Is he book camping with EG in Phoenix? I'm Have sure he can get. I'm sure he can get Taco Bells there. Yo, I don't know, man. Phoenix, Arizona is like a big desert, right? Don't they have nothing there? This is like a big California flame. I've never been into Phoenix, so I don't know. I heard they were book camping there already. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Book camping for for the TI three qualifiers. Yeah, anybody, anybody, if they know, let me know, cause I don't know. But yeah, I hope he he comes and we get to eat Taco Bell together. And then when he's eating that Taco Bell, he could finally realize that these two years of hard training is complete not worth it, cause Taco Bell is shit. <laughs> there, there's my flame for Taco Bell. So that's all. That's all I got. A little time. I think the food they serve at the office in Seattle, the Valve office, office, was much was much better than the Taco Bell's. Yeah, if you guys player lounge got like really sick first class treatment. You guys got like don't don't you get the food as well? No, we got we got like packaged food, we got healthy food, we got Subway sandwich or we got good we got sandwich and we got like salads. When I went to your your player lounge, you guys got candy, you guys got chocolate bar. I'm like, damn, I'm in the wrong room because who the hell wants sandwich and salad? It's I didn't, for you. but <laughs> so patching. All right, we, we're going to get a good a game on our hands eventually, but uh, we'll be back. Actually, I was talking about the food at the office. Did, did you? Were you at the office? Actually, you mean the Valve headquarters? Yeah, the like Valve where they have like not, free candy not, and free drinks for everybody. Yeah, not not the not the food at the Benaria Hall. Oh, okay, I I wasn't there when when you guys were training and stuff, but I saw pictures. Right, they basically like had yeah, catering. You, uh, you know how much weight I gained? <laughs> Just from that week? Yeah, I gained like seven. <laughs> no, the whole trip, seven kilos. 
Um, there, there's this myth that uh, American waters make you gain weight compared to any other girl's water because like. And I was we were we are like training in the room. Uh -huh. Right next to the room, there's a rack of chocolate candies, and on the other side is the refrigerator for all the drinks. You can just you don't even have to walk far to get it. So there's no way you are going to lose weight there. <laughs> The calorie you burn by walking to the refrigerator does not equate to the, the monster drinks that you're consuming. Yeah. Yeah, and not to mention the lunch food and the dinner food was awesome as well. Well, I hope nobody else is hungry watching the stream because we're talking about all this food. Actually, this is another story. This, this story boggles my mind. Um, I grew up in America. I, I came here when I was 10 years old, but I spent like 10, 12 years in America. And one of my best friends is white. And we went back to Japan to take a trip and to, you know, travel and all this stuff. The first night when we actually went there, I was like, guys, let's get some Japanese cuisine, right? We're in Japan. Let's eat Jap Japan food. And the guy goes to McDonald's and I'm like, really? Really? You travel like halfway across the world to eat McDonald's? But, um, you want to get Kobe beef? I want to, I want to get Kobe beef, but Kobe <laughs> beef was fucking expensive. Yeah, yeah it is. All right, he's you, coming. You know the story about the Kobe beef, how they treat the cow. Yeah, apparently they uh, they feed it like uh, alcohol. Yeah, they feed it alcohol and it sleeps in an air conditioned area mm -hmm. and they get they massages. Do yeah daily massages for the Yo, cow. What a what a way to go, right? If you're gonna be a cow. You gotta be a Kobe beef cow. All right, we're back. Gonna get some Dota ready. We're good. We're good. All right, we gotta remind everybody where the hell we are in this game because we're like thirty minute pause. Um, the best way I could describe it is that Dignitas got first blood on Roshan. I mean, they gotta sneak first one, first blood Roshan. But despite of that, score is exactly the same. The goal lead is very very tiny, and I personally <laughs> feel that Alliance is actually ahead because of the hero composition. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Without the Roshan advantage, Dignitas would be in a world of trouble right now. Oh, uh, Fog Dota trying to do his thing. Is he buying item? He does have the Fable. Buy something. He gets. Oh no, he still survived. How is he Fog? How is he survived? His magic one up. He finally dies. The teleport scroll gets cancelled. I think that was actually a very, very smart play. Uh, for Loda, he didn't use his Omni Slash. Oh my god. He didn't use his Omni Slash because basically whoever comes in next will eat the Omni Slash to the face. Uh, if he yeah, had man, unfortunately he didn't. So. Yeah, and are you disappointed he didn't get a smoke? I I'm very disappointed that he didn't get a smoke. He had about thirty minutes to think about getting a smoke, and he didn't. Fog Dota. I'm disappointed. In any case, back and in now, the mid lane. And now he's left with AD goal. Yep. <laughs> Can't even get that back in the mid lane. The teleport comes in. That is from a Templar Assassin. Tower is low. It's how we're gonna get denied. What a play by S4. And he's gonna get a couple of kills, I think. Trap's gonna be used on way too sexy. And now Snaking Dota is gonna be running towards his ally. He's gonna kill himself, but the second Mel Strike's gonna come really soon. Where's the second Mel Strike? It's not gonna come! As S4 will get a turn around. Anybody think gonna take that oh, Nightmare? No, no Nightmare just yet. No RP Nightmare's either. Down. And there's gonna be a Fiend's Grip on Universe Dota. Look at how low Snaking! Snaking's gonna survive, my god! Finally, he does die. I, this nightmare is so trolly for the last couple of seconds. Way too sexy, he's on the run. Brings out's gonna be used on top. He's gonna go down as well. This last couple of minutes really allowing Alliance to pull further and further ahead. Alliance, a Universe Dota is gonna get one kill. He magic wands up. He's trying to man fight this, but S4 is gonna win this man fight. End of the day, that was two kill for S4, assist on an S4. And a tower denied for S4 as well. Huge win for Alliance. Yeah, denying that tower means so much for them because of the way Dignitas line up. They have to get their gold from the Roshan kill, from the tower tower kill, and that really hurt them a lot. Yep, and you talked about what Dignitas need to do in the next couple of minutes. They need to get Roshan. S4 gets a trap on top, so even if the Roshan is going to happen... Yeah, that's, that's very important. Yeah, very, very smart play right there. Uh, Loda, of course, does have the drums finish, does have the uh, phase already up, so that drums is very important for him to actually spin and actually have the mount for Omni Slash afterwards. So, AUI might be f sitting very safe. Actually, AUI somehow has got himself he a Midas. Yeah, he went for a Midas, which is quite surprising. Actually, you know how, like, the the most standard way to get Midas is, uh, you know, get it as soon as possible? What do you feel about Midas being a catch-up item? Getting EXP, getting gold? And basically, yeah, it can be good. It can be a good catch-up item. I I totally agree. But in this situation where 
Dignitas has to push and group. So I'm not really sure about this decision. Maybe it could be better if he gets his armlet up as soon as possible. Well, we'll see whether that decision actually end up paying off. Uh, EGM and Universe are like right next to each other. I, yeah, they're not right next to each other, but they don't like. Yeah, he does have the Fiend Script back online. That Fiend Script, I thought it had a longer cooldown. He's gonna walk right and there's a Nightmare. He's gonna get tossed back though. There's no rock. No, there is a rock on top. EGM is gonna be dead for sure. And I think there you could just so go- That was good play by Fog there. He lifted the Bane into his team and he right clicked Slada to wake the Slada up at the same time. Get off the nightmare buff. I'm very surprised to see Dignitas not straight to go into Roshan pit, but maybe they can't guess. Here comes Loda. RP's gonna be used. That's on three. Melstrike's gonna get one. Spin's gonna get a second. And way too sexy. He's gonna try to run, but there's no running from him. And that's another kill. S4 does have the haste. He's using it. He's gonna go right on snaking. Snaking kills himself. But Omni Slash cuts right through. Do you go into Roshan pit right now? You have Melstrike. You have all four heroes there. No, they're gonna get the tier one tower. Very nice. It's much safer for them to down the tier one tower so that. In, fu in the future, if they want to contest Roshan, there's no tier 1 tower for the Inutas to speak on. And of course, with everybody having such a low respawn time, because they're low level, they could TP into that tier 1 if tower. If they lose one more fight, the Inutas, I think it's gonna be very difficult for them uh, to come back. Well, Brock is also down right now, and are they gonna just go in? Mel Strike is gonna be. Yeah, they're gonna straight up. Healing Ward is down for 30 seconds, RP is not up for about 7 minutes. Finds out could be could be very bad for them. They they don't find look at the sword control through the river though. There is no sight for any oh, dire. I think they, they know something is going on. Well, fog just walked through a trap, so they're way too sexy. I don't think they need to back out. Illuminate's gonna hit right onto oh, the true support, no. and that's gonna be back the Rosh is low, the Rosh is low, blinding light pushes fog up top. Oh S4 is gonna get the ages, and that's absolutely huge. Oh Nemo. no. I don't even know what's going on. People getting pushed up a cliff. They scare down to the low ground here. Snake King is low. Snake King is going to be dead as well. The Bulldog Bear is right there. No, actually, Aoi Bear is right there. But he's getting in huge trouble as well. He's going to try to run out. You know what's the biggest travesty if he die here? There is... No, he's actually going to turn around. Nice root gaming here from AUI. He needs to use Midas. Bear, run, my friend. You need to use Midas. But the grip is on him right now. He's slow. Does he have buyback? Oh, I think he does. Uh, there's a buyback from way too sexy. Aoi, I think he's going to be dead. Does he get a buyback immediately? No, he does. Not nah, way too sexy, he's low as well, he's spending so much damage, way too sexy, still alive! How's he still alive? He's gonna die down to a side play here, Universe is gonna get Nightmare, and one more Brain Snap? He doesn't have mana for the Brain Snap, he's waiting for the crush, he's gonna miss! EGM don't guys, but he doesn't do enough damage! He survives with like 10 HP, EGM's gonna be running on the side, he buys Ernie immediately before he dies, he should be okay as well, S4 is gonna bring Dagger out, and what a fight guys, this is like the most amazing Dota in the last 10-12 minutes, and at the end oh, of the day, I was so, so triggered by what happened. The blinding light bounced EGM on, on the high ground, and the Magnus tried to skill up to kill EGM. Uh, I, I mean, uh, the Rubik, and he, he stole. He, skill, he skilled up and he stole skill and he skilled back down, and they were like going up and down. <laughs> Man, that was why I was so damn confused in that team fight. But end of the fight, is, I think S4 had 2k go. He's gonna pick up an item, it's gonna be a Mithril Hammer for perhaps his Desolator or BKB. I think, I think Desolator would be very good for the Spirit Bear. True, not true. To, not, not to mention the Inferno as well. Yeah, on the same token though, there's also a lot of uh, big AoE stuns and like the Crush, uh, Ice Path, Dual Breath and all that stuff. I think they have one more chance to come back in this game. If they lose this fight at bottom, I think it's gonna be over for them. Well, Slaughter has that Blink Dagger, and I think he might be seeing Observe War being placed. What a smart war. They will know that Slaughter is gonna be coming in. Teleportation Sport is gonna be coming in as well. Templar Assassin getting ready to put down oh, those traps. Oh, Magnus, uh, Magnus has his dagger now. He just got it. Uh, he is... I, I don't know where he is right now. Perhaps gonna get recalled in. Universe pops his... Uh-oh. There's a root oh, here on RP. S4. RP, that's gonna be on to two support here. Omni Slash and Rock. The Rock came down way too slowly. And the Rock's not doing too much. Meanwhile, it's gonna be a full retreat for Team Dignitas. And uh -huh. Aoi's gonna get picked off as well. You talked about if they lose one more fight. That's it. That's and well, is this the fight? I think so. I think so. Oh man, they're gonna lose one more. Yeah, it, it's gonna be looking tough. Mel Strike being used. Somebody's yep, on that's four kills under a tower. Warlock Golem being killed. Blink Dagger not being effective here for Universe Dota. Like you're, you're thinking whether you should give up as the instance or you should just try to fight some more, continue fighting. But because they went sort of it's an all in lineup where if they fail to push with the Roshan, it's over for them. 
Yeah, I mean, this lineup is built to get continuous around uh, advantage by winning team fights after team fight by getting Warlock ult or getting the Roshan. They haven't done either of those. And this is keep in mind that they had a huge early game advantage after the level one Roche, so I I don't see them coming back uh, for team. Yeah, they're they're actually quite confident in this strat. Where you look at the the first three picks they they had, they picked up Lone Druid, they picked up Rubik, and they could have potentially picked up Life Sealer in the same time, which would transition into a very strong draft. Basically, I talk about you having three a uh, two good lanes because of the Life Sealer tri lane, which is so strong, mm -hmm. and the Lone Druid one versus one matchup. But they forgo that. And they went for the strat, which they wanted to do the level one rush. And I mean, they got the level one rush off, but it is it's a tough game right now for Team Dignitas. They're down about five thousand gold, uh, about six thousand experience. The key items that they have is the blink, which is so far hasn't done a single thing. There's a Midas on the bear, and that's pretty much it. There's just like no uh, real items on anybody. Th that's the re that's the reason why I don't really agree with the Midas on the bear, which I feel he should have invested in his gold into something that's more impact early on, rather than Midas that you have to continue farming. Because of how the, their lineup works, Dignitas, it's either they push early or they, they are screwed later on. Yep, and instead of an armlet, or maybe even Vlad's, like something just early game that helps your allies, helps your team, give you a... Yeah, I think I think the armlet is definitely the first go-to item that he has to go for. Actually, I want to hear your opinion about armlet bear. Do you think it's... Because Perfect Row has recently banned it? I, I don't think it should happen, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm I'm agreeing with you there. I, I I like to see it patched out because the fact that it just gives regen instead good. of it's yeah. too good for the bear. Yeah, it's, it's just, just too good. Simply too cost effective. So, well, looks like Ali is gonna have another difficult time in terms of uh, how would how would you balance it? Do you remove it completely or you remove some of the perks the bear gets? I I just say that whatever works for a hero, like whatever it does to a hero, then that's the same thing for the bear. Like it will actually get degen instead of regen. Like minus 35 so, HP. So you're okay, you're okay with the item if it reduces the best hit points at the same time? I'm okay with the item. I'm not okay with the fact that it gives regen to the spare bear when it gives uh, minus HP to every other hero. So basically, in the, if, if I was Ice Frog and was fixing this patch, I would say, all right, the bear could still get it, but he will lose HP when it's activated. So you sense? have to continuously micro it. <laughs> all right, carry Toggle it on and off? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, if you if you want to spend all your APM on that, you know more power to you. I feel like it, it wasn't like Spear Bear wasn't a, a hero before, right? He was still a very refined uh, hero. Like sometimes you get you see Maelstrom build, you see AC build, you see Radiance. Like there's a, a ton of different builds that is completely viable. But now with this armlet thing, it just gives you so much. It's just too good that you can't give up the armlet. Yeah, and I don't think that's fair. So. We'll see what Ice Frog does. Um, I, I'm expecting the 6.78 patch to be released after the Eastern and Western qualifiers. And then teams could have a, as yeah, much practice time as they, they need down. for the TI3. But meanwhile though, S4 back yeah, in the they're gonna group, to They're going to group S5 again. This is their second attempt. Against Ward is doing so much right now. They see absolutely everything. Of course, this patch of tree being destroyed doesn't actually help. And here comes a Spirit Barrier. This is where having an arm that is so much needed. As far yeah. as it is, he's coming right in. Is there any detection? Maybe they realize S4 is gonna. Ooh, there's a sentry ward here. If it's. Oh, but Loda's gonna come right in with the Omni Slash. There's a creep ward coming in, but he's gonna spin right there. Any oh, roots? rooted. Let's yeah, see. nice root here, but lifted is S4. Ice Pass gonna hit on top. Macro Pyre. There's a Macro Pyre. S4 in a little bit of trouble. Where's he? Where's the skewer? I did hear Omni Slash on the back on Loda doing some work, yeah. and they just can't kill S4. They surrounded him they with. They use Hopkey on the Slada and the Omni Slash on the Slada. Well, two ultimate being baited out, but despite of that, I feel like Alliance still winning this quite a bit. They do have the rock available. Is, are they going to be dropping it? Look at the split on Alliance. They're doing it very well. They're just so split. You can't you can't find a you know a big. Uh... I think they'll they'll wait for the Slada to come back because they realize they dropped two ultimates like you said, just for the Slada. Oh, Loda's going to be running right back in. He's uh, he gets lifted. Skewer's going to miss. Fog is still okay. Where's the rock? The rock is gonna get dropped. Fatal Bond's gonna be on top. This has gotta be the team fight. They win. A slaughter is out. He's teleporting back in. But look at S4. He's doing so much damage to Fog. No, Fog has refraction. He's gonna go right at the creep waves, helping out to break the refraction charge. S4 being left alone without allies. He's gonna go down. The question is, how much do you chase? I don't think they could chase anything. Everybody else is still alive. S4 is gonna be back in about 40 seconds. He has buyback, does he? No, he bought something. Actually, he does have buyback. It only costs 600 gold. The game, it felt like it's been going for so long. 
If he wants it, he, he can teleport right back. He does buy back. back. Teleport comes in. And now he's trapped. Right. Nice micro here. Using the bear to actually take off the debuff on the sleep. But he still has to run back to the tower. He's trying to survive. He's buying as much items as possible. Trying to lose as little gold. But at the end of the day, he will die. S4, meanwhile, on the other part of the map is still chasing. Aki in a little bit of trouble. S4 is still chasing. Second macro pyre gets dropped. The trap is going to hit on a couple. And he's got the blink dagger. He's going in for fog. No, he wants naking. Mel Strike's going to pick off one immediately. He's going to turn around for way too sexy. Way too sexy. Might be LeBron Jays. He might be the king, but. He's running with the tail behind his legs right now. S4 still diving, still chasing. Blink Strike comes in and way too sexy. Is dead. Loda pushes in as well with a spin. I think the GG might be coming very soon. They're just down way too much gold. They're down way too many kills. And their li the lineup is meant is not meant to make any big comebacks, I don't think. Yeah, you can't really come back from that lineup. It's so difficult. You just have to rely on the snowball effect. You get the Roshan, you control the map by taking out all the tier out the tier towers and you group up as five and you push the high ground, but it's not working for them. Well it looks like we have a teleport comes in from the universe, but Omni Sash right there. Good thing that they have everybody taking the damage together. Fog is gonna get you hit together. Blink RP! That is gonna be the exclamation mark. You don't GG out, I'll make you GG out. Oh he finally calls it as a final team white. Overshadow of the Fallen Tier 2. What a great game for Alliance. We had long pause, but looks like uh, these guys Lumia, only got stronger. Lumia on the RC or something. Yeah. S4, Magnus, Blues, Amaro, Bruno, uh, Magnus, Bean. What do you think about that? I think it is a small sample size. A very, very small sample size. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I will still trust my, my Magnus on the hands of uh, S4. <laughs> We'll see it though, but maybe, maybe maybe it was the fact that they took away Templar uh, and of course Andy Magnus is only what the Snake King play, right? They also banned all of the other solo mids, so maybe a little bit of targeted ban, but Alliance will be going to game 3. We had a long day in front of us, or past us, but we're going to have one last game between Alliance and Team Dignitas. This one will decide who moves on to the winner bracket and who gets dropped down to the lower bracket. It's all tied up. He is Winter. I am Luminous. Maybe we have more story time for you. Maybe we have some better Dota for you. We'll see what's going to be happening. And for now, we are signing off. But Game 3 coming up really, really soon.